Good morning, OEA. My name is Robert McPhee, and it's been my honor to serve you on the SRS Board of Directors for the past four years. I first decided to get involved with SRS shortly after the pension reforms in 2012. You know the ones I'm talking about, working until you're age 60, having at least 35 years of service credit, and increasing member contributions from 10 to 14 percent. These changes altered my future plans dramatically. And I wanted to understand why the board at the time would agree to such changes. After sitting on the board for four years, I have a much deeper understanding of why those boards made the decisions they did. I've come to realize what it means to be a mature pension fund and how that changes the decision-making process for any board. Back in the 80s and 90s, members' contributions virtually paid for all of our benefits we were paying out. Board decisions for a 13th check and for an automatic cost of living adjustment made sense during that time. Today, however, SDRS pays out nearly $4 billion more in benefits than we take in from member contributions, which means the pension fund today is more dependent on investment returns than ever before. The economic crisis in 2008 put a huge strain on our pension fund. In 2012, the funding level for the SRS fund was only at 58%. Today, due to pension reform and excellent investment returns, the fund has a funding level at the market value of 87.8%, a remarkable turnaround. Over the last five-year period, our board consultants from Callen rank SDRS in the top 10% for investment returns in our peer group. One of the biggest concerns the SRS board always has to consider is weighing risk versus return, which is why the board's asset allocation decision is probably the most impactful decision we make on the board. In 2017, our board actuary informed the board that there was a 48% chance of our funding level dipping below the 50% threshold. As of today, I'm proud to say that that 48% chance in 2017 has been reduced to 16%. Pension reform and investment returns have done exactly what they were intended to do, and they have put STRS fund in a much stronger position. For the first time in a very long time, our board is actually considering enhancing benefits. My goal as a board member is first and foremost to protect the assets of Ohio's teachers so current and future generations can have similar benefits to those that our current retirees receive. I've asked our consultants to calculate the impact of not only some sort of COLA for our retirees, but also the impact of what a member contribution drop would have on the system. I've also asked them to evaluate the effect of dropping the mandatory age requirement of age 60 to find out if this is a viable option for our current board to consider. The progress we've made over the last 10 years is a result of sacrifices by both active and retired teachers. I believe any positive steps we can take should impact both of these groups, but only in a way that doesn't impair the fiscal integrity of the system. We often talk about how elections matter. In being chair of the SRS board this year, I can honestly say how important this election for the SRS board will be. The people running against our OEA endorsed candidates are being supported by the same groups that want not just the COLA restored, but also want back pay for all of their missed COLA payments. The amount of liability that this would add to the fund would be so large that member contributions from our current active teachers would need to be raised significantly. Additionally, the people supporting these other candidates are the same ones that were supporting a proposed partnership during our recent November board meeting. They wanted the SRS board to hand over an initial $250 million to a company called QED and eventually ramp that up to $65 billion. You heard me right, $65 billion. Mind you, when QED was vetted by our staff and consultants, they had no staff, no office, no clients under advisement, and they had no assets under management. A company in name only that, in my opinion, 
was looking to get rich off of Ohio's teachers. I'm proud to say that the majority of our current board has taken the advice of our staff and consultants and realized this is not a risk that we are willing to take with your assets. The only chance I can see for this partnership to gain any traction would be in a substantial change in the board. In other words, through this upcoming election. Elections have consequences. The strength of OEA is always in our members. I am proud to have screened and received the OEA endorsement in this upcoming election. I ask you today for your help in getting out the word about all of your OEA endorsed candidates. For the two active seats, those candidates are myself, Robert McPhee, and fellow OEA member, Jeff Rhodes. And for the retired member seat, your OEA endorsed candidate is Rita Walters. All of OEA's endorsed candidates are opposed to this partnership that was proposed and have stood firm against it and will continue to do so. This election will be about voter turnout. If our OEA members vote, we will prevail. Please, when you get your ballot, don't just vote. Of course, I want you to vote, but when you do, will you please take your ballot into school, talk with your colleagues, remind them about all three OEA endorsed candidates. Let them know not only how easy it is to vote, but how important that vote is now more than ever. The future for all of Ohio's teachers are dependent on this election. Again, my name is Robert McPhee. I thank you for your time this morning and I hope you have a fantastic RA. Thank you.